I've been on a lot of interviews, lots of inter interviews. And my philosophy, uh, the way I was taught um, by my mom, dad, actually my parents, told me to always go on an interview, even even if you don't want the job or if you think you can't get it or if you're, you know what I mean, if you're... If you're not qualified or whatever, like like you know, if you don't, you know, try to try it, try the interview and get the experience, you know, and uh, like it's up to them to to want to see something in your resume or cover letter to give you an interview, anyways, right? So if you're if somebody's offering you an interview, always take it, right? And uh, um, go go, it's practice, exactly, Bob. Yeah, right, exactly, it's practice, right? Um, so er and, and so every time going into it. Well, like with that mentality, it kind of takes the edge off a little bit, right? You, I know when you really want a job, you can get really um, nervous, you know, and anxious. Always answer questions honestly about your abilities. Never, uh, never overstate your qualifications. Uh, and, and and and, but know what your value, know your worth. And when it comes to negotiation, always, um, always know your worth, right? Shoot, shoot high, and expect to meet in the middle, right? Um, yeah, like when, when they come, when they come to you, what, what do you want? Like, what's your salary expectation or whatever, right? Um, depending on what your job is for, right? You need to know what that, what the high end is, you know, because you have to, you have to say that number or, or a dollar higher or something, you know, because you need to at least get, you know, close enough to that number you can. So you got to Google that, right? You have to Google whatever uh the the money is that you're uh being uh, like what it is for that job position now a lot of companies will tell you straight up too like okay our first years get this second years get this third years get this journeymen get this foremen get this unions are, are like that right unions are will uh you'll get paid per for for first year second year whatever right so there's there's that as well um but a lot of non-union uh, companies will always negotiate uh, rates. So if you're going to go to a drywall company, for example, steel stud and drywall, uh, they're uh, almost always going to uh, negotiate on rates with you, right? So you need to be prepared for that, okay? Like, um, it, it's, um, yeah, like you got to know what the high end is, what, what your high end is, worth, what you're worth, right? Uh, but yeah, and then, and but never, and never overstalt. Qualif uh, overstate your qualifications, right? These six questions always come up in construction interviews for any build-related job. Prepare in advance for a great interview. Uh, your skills, yes. Your strengths, and maybe even your weaknesses. Uh, why you want to want this particular job, and your understanding of the construction industry and the job at hand, and your future goals. First thing you need to do, write a list of all all of your skills that the things that you know in that list include the uh, include like uh, your understanding of the construction industry okay and and your job uh, include things that like that okay um like you do you learn you have a mentor right you you have a mentor outside of the construction industry you have a coach right having coaches is is important okay that's what that's what Roger w what Ray Wakefield says right if you have a coach then you, you know you have, um, you, you know you're doing taking the right steps to uh, improve yourself and uh, be better and have an edge on the on your competitors, which is other workers, right? So, um, mention that. Mention that you spend time uh, studying outside of work and that you have a mentor and that you have a coach that um, you know helps explain things and is there to answer questions for you. That would probably be a pretty cool thing to hear um, if, as an interviewer, you know, that would be pretty neat. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard that before. The fact that everybody on a construction site is, um, the office is on a different, uh, a different site. This is a big thing that people don't really understand that well. Is, especially when they're first starting out, is that there's all different companies working on a, on a construction project. Now, all of them have offices off-site. They have multiple jobs going on all at once. Procurement and, and planning and scheduling is uh, is very important. So Bob's saying, yeah, if you research the company and uh, um, like do your homework on them so that you know, um, you can say, hey, so I saw you guys are doing this project. Uh, how's that coming along? That would be really interesting to work on or something, you know. Uh, um, 
you know, to talk and uh, talk about them, right? And um, you know, it, it, things common things to ask. I mean, like, what about like the things I would I find important would be like, okay, so what about training and education, right? Um, and advancement. So how what do I have to to do? Um, we, what goals do we have to set so that I can get paid more, right? That's the number one thing. I want to get paid more right off the bat, okay? I want to go into to, into them telling them that I want to get paid more. So what goals do I need to, to achieve to get more money? And then I'm going to achieve those goals and then, and then you're going to pay me that money, right? And I'll, we'll set new goals. <laughs> that's, the, that's the key, okay? It's about, it's about production and safety. Uh, and they they want you to know they want they want if you can t tell them that you understand that time uh, is valuable and um, but in safety and production are you know you have to tell them that you respect it and you understand there's legislation that you know that there's you have to do hazard assessments especially if you're going for a union job okay you have to let, you have to let them know I understand the the process of safety like how we have to do um how we have to do our hazard assessments you know we have to update our hazard assessments throughout the day we we have inspections equipment inspections and tool inspections right there um there's rules right and we have to learn the rules of the site the we have to have orientations for each site you know we need to uh uh, we need to let them know, okay, uh, the safe work practices, uh, you know, um, and safe job procedures, like you would, you would appreciate a, a digital copy of a health and safety manual it would be good. I think a union would probably give you that, you know, would probably give you um, a copy of their health and safety manual. And then, okay, so yeah, th so then there's safety, right? So we're just like, yeah, we don't, we don't do anything that um, is dangerous, right? Or, or, or uh, against OHS legislation. We um, we have to take the time to do it, but we also do it in a, in a in a we understand it, so we can do it quickly. Third thing is your is your understanding of production. You have to learn as you go. You have to know. You have to you know you're learning as you're going, and you have to always be looking for a better way to like improve your improve your uh, skills. You have to know that companies make maybe like five percent off you. Okay, like uh, it, it's if you're getting paid. Uh, I forget what it was like. Say fifty dollars, okay, an hour. That's like a a good a uh a, a a good rate with all the benefits and all that included, right? So say it's if they're paying out fifty dollars an hour for you, you need to be making them like two fifty, okay? Uh, that like at least two fifty, you know? So it it's you gotta you gotta tell them that you understand the that you you can you know how to watch your production levels so that you're making them money. Um, and then it's like, yeah, you can say, yo, you know, I know I'm, I'm young, right? And I don't know the cost of everything, but I'm paying attention to cost. I'm paying attention to how much I produce so I know my value, right? So that we can come and negotiate at the table when I get good, you know, for more money, you know? Just express that you, you have a passion for it, you love it, you know? And like, well, uh, just, yeah, talk about that and what makes you want to do it. You want to tell them what your goals are and your goals are to just be the best that you can be, right? Like you wanna, you wanna keep uh, learning, and you wanna, you're you're just always gonna wanna co constantly wanting to improve. Yeah, you just you're always gonna be a student of construction because it's just a, there's always something new to learn or something you haven't learned. Like you, nobody can know all of it. Interview questions for construction workers. So tell us about the construction projects you have worked on in the past year. Yeah, that is a big one. That is a big one. Uh, they always ask that. Uh, so unless you're new, new, right? But they'll oh, they will ask of your of like the jobs that you've done, right? If what experience you have and stuff. So put your always put your best self forward. Make a list of your like top three projects that you've done, okay? And what you did on those projects, and have that ready, right? Have that ready. Don't be afraid to bring like a. Don't be afraid to bring a like a little, you know, notepad or examples or something like you know just just to be you know so you have references. What do you think are the key responsibilities of a construction worker? Test the candidate's knowledge of what the job entails. So the key responsibilities of a construction worker are to be safe, right? Number one is to be safe. 
number yeah, no, show up. Number two uh, is to be productive. And uh, number three is to be, um, like I would say, knowledge, to be learning, to be a student, right? Uh, those would be the, the, the three things that I would say. And uh, dedicating yourself to improvement. As a young, you're a young guy, you want to be like, you want to be hustle, go, right? You want to be, you want to be smart and safe and you want to be fast, right? Um, and, and, and do a lot of work. And that's how guys are going to want to train you. They're going to be like, "Yo, yo, guy, you're coming with me, right?" Or, um, hey, or, or the like, the guys you're working for be like, "Okay, so we want you to do in this in- instead, right?" Because they're always going to want you producing. If you're on a broom, that means they think that you're not capable of doing something better. Okay, like some sometimes like there's some labor jobs. Okay, that that that's what they have to do. Like they have to go and clean out units or whatever and collect all the garbage after the peace workers, basically, right? Like which is kind of kind of shitty. But um, and some people just want to do that, and that's fine. Okay, but um, if you're even if you're even if you are starting that that something like that, right? You shouldn't be doing that for long if you want to get into peace work or learning, right? You shouldn't be pushing the broom for long because uh, you want to be learning you want to be installing installers are always going to be more valuable than laborers so they're not going to cry over losing the labor uh you know they're going to be they want people to install is what they want have you ever been in a situation where the supervisor was unhappy with your work what did you learn from the situation so this reveals more about the candidate's work ethic attitude performance and skills Right. So what they're after there then is you you always own up to your mistakes, okay? And you trust your foreman to deal with the information. And that's what you need to tell them. Okay. You say, I communicate directly with my foreman, and if there's a mistake made, I give him the or her the information that and and then it's up to them to do it with do with it what they want to do okay once once you report things to your foreman and you're honest and you are always honest and open to them about what went on they'll then uh be the advocate you the in between uh who will then explain to this general contractor or whatever you know what i mean and that's the same thing uh if you're in a if you're a journeyman teaching an apprentice you're going to um, you're going to take responsibility for what happens when he, when that when apprentice is working under you and the apprentice is going to always have to be honest with the, with the journeyman, right? So if the, if something happens and the journeyman's not around, it's up to the apprentice to tell the, your, the journeyman that, okay, I screwed up. Okay. Own up to your mistakes and, and learn from them, right? You have to just learn from them and just not do them again. That's how we learn is by making mistakes, right? Like that's no, you know, it's just the way it is. Um, some mistakes, like safety mistakes, things like that, those can be like you know fatal, um, or you know could cause injury and things like that. But I, that, that's not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about um, making mistakes, like having to tear something out and rebuild it, or you know what I mean. That can happen. So is it is it wrong to say my foreman was a dick? Oh no, no, no. I mean, I've had tons of foremen who were dicks for sure. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, you, there, there's just yeah, there's a lot of different personalities that you'll run into, and that and that's another thing to understand about construction is that there's a lot of different personalities on site all working uh, together. Um, a lot of testosterone. Uh, there's a lot of uh, um, it, you know, it's just it's a it's a sausage fest out there, right? So um, the there's tempers, there's uh, just weird people too. You know, like guys just some guys are just weird and they don't mix with they just don't mix with other people you know they're introverts and they're cranky uh, you know what i mean and then there's outgoing and and loud <laughs> you know what i mean like it's just there's all kinds of people on site and it's up to uh you know it's just people just have to get along and work together you know that's uh that's that's key right right just own up to your mistakes you got to be honest but you got to be careful okay because you don't want to be out blabbing things to all the trades and the in the, you don't want to be you know you have to be uh, you have to respect the chain of command and the line of communication, right? And, and know that it just goes between the foreman and you. That's it, right? And then it's over, right? Unless the, the foreman calls on you or the, the superintendent uh, calls on you, some, you know, to talk about it again. What steps have you taken in terms 
of further developing your skill set. So there you go, right? So right away, you can say, um, yeah, I, I study. I, I study um, uh, online. I study, I study online and I have a coach, right? Uh, you know, I, I've hired a coach and I study outside online. So I'm, I'm always learning how it works, right? I'm always, uh, I have, you know, resources available to me for, you know, answers. So and and guidance right so that's 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 pretty boss actually you know i never never heard that from an interview before so that's cool let's not be confused because safety is completely different that if you're if something um unsafe is happening it's your responsibility to tell the like somebody an authority of some sort right like it's called due diligence you need to tell the person right away that is doing something unsafe that hey that's unsafe don't do that and if the person consi- ca- persists on doing it, then you go and, and you have to tell the, an authority that, hey, man, this guy's doing this and he might hurt himself, right? Um, and and it, it's just, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's a responsibility of yours to do that, okay? Because it, you could get into trouble too if you, if you don't, right? And then, yeah, so look at your skills, your strengths, and maybe even your weaknesses. So, yeah, if you have a weakness um, and it's like, you know, don't, don't be afraid to talk about it and and kind of be prepared to have that right they're going to want to know strengths and a weakness have something prepared uh why you want this particular job your understanding of the construction industry and the job at hand and your future goals yeah like oh so your future goals okay now this is this is where you need to be uh um careful okay because you 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 don't you don't want to say oh one day i want to own my own company Okay, you don't want to say that. Okay, you wanna you want to say, um, and you don't want to say like, okay, I want to go, I want to get good and go piecework. You don't want to say that. You don't want to say I want to own my own company. You want to say um, whatever that job is. Okay, so if you're going in as a first year apprentice, you your goals are I want to become a journeyman, and that's my my goal, right? I want to become the one of the best framers or whatever, you know. That's my goal. I want to learn. I, I, I love this stuff. It interests me. I want to learn as much about it as I can. And I, and I want to become a journeyman. That, that's that's it, right? So if you're already a journeyman, you want to say, okay, well, um, I want to, I want to, um, I'm, I want to keep learning and I want to uh, go to the next level, right? And get into management and things like that, right? So, um, yeah, talk about that, right? Don't talk about the, you know, oh, yeah, I want to go, you know, learn and then go piecework and I want, you know, da da da. General skills to highlight. So, what the hiring manager will be looking for the person who interviews you will be gauging not only your level of construction experience, but also your attitude and enthusiasm for the job. They will also seek to hire the best person for the job so make sure that you mention your command of construction tools techniques and health and safety procedures yes exactly right so make sure you like i said at the beginning make a list of all the things you know that you can do and always put your best self first right talk about you know how to use all the tools right or you know how to use the impact gun name them right you can use impact guns and shotguns and travel screw guns and router and talk about all the stuff that you can do right tools and the techniques you know this is another good one here actually this page here uh talk about your work experience uh, questions about your teamwork, work ethic, practice makes perfect. Yeah, practice makes perfect, right? Yeah, you want to you you want to be cool, collected, and confident when you sit for your upcoming interview. Of course, there's no guarantee the interviewer will ask all of these specific questions. The more prepared you are, though, the easier it will be to give thorough answers. Go over these questions in your mind, or have a friend or family member pose as the interviewer and ask the questions a few times until you're comfortable with your answers. Don't forget to brush up your resume to include your recent work projects and contact uh, your previous bosses or coworkers to see if they're willing to be listed as references. Key takeaways, so prepare your skills, uh, prepare your skills tool belt. Before your interview, make a list of the important construction and workplace health and safety skills you possess so that you can readily talk about these with your interviewer. What to bring? Bring both a copy of your most recent resume and a list of references to present to the hiring manager. Your resume should include mention of significant construction projects you have worked on and any trade certifications you hold. 
and emphasize teamwork. Ha- have a few anecdotes ready to share about how well you have worked on teams before. If you have accomplishments like perfect work attendance or workplace safety or production awards, be sure to mention these. Yeah, great stuff, man. So where do you see yourself in five or 10 years? What is your main weakness? A favorite in any interview. Weaknesses allows interviewers to grasp how you perceive yourself. The key to this question is to turn a weakness into a positive. Apply your answer to everyday construction tasks and finish with how you combat combat the problem. It's about detail, analysis, and solution. This is a good one here, yeah. Uh, tell us about a time you handled uh, stress successfully. Yeah, these are good here, too. That's probably enough to uh, get you ready. I don't want to bombard you with uh, with material. Uh, with these three pages, plus what we talked about tonight, you're well prepared uh, for the uh, for the interview. 100%, yeah. Uh, how to, uh, so, yeah, write your resume according to the industry. Be prepared for questions from the interviewer. And dress to impress. So... Uh, what you what you wear to an interview is very important. Dress professionally, not casually. The interviewer will notice how your confidence shines because you feel great in what you are wearing. For women, do not wear mini skirts or really open chest blouses. For men, do not wear tennis shoes, jeans, or t-shirts. Yeah, that is actually a. Uh, that's that's even true for these jobs, really. Yeah, like you don't go in a suit, obviously, for a construction job, but you could go in, you know, khakis and in like a golf shirt or something, something like um, office casual almost, but not jeans and, and, and running shoes, you know. 